Hi, my name is Paul from Physics High, and today what I'd like to do is to give you an overview of Module 5, Advanced Mechanics, and the first inquiry question, which deals with projectile motion. Now, I am not going to give you a full detailed description of everything that's involved in Module 5. It's meant to be an overview so that you can highlight some of the key points that you need to remember and also some tips in terms of how to succeed in any future exam. I have lots of videos that go into each of the concepts at a greater detail, so I encourage you to have a look at those and you can find them on my website or on YouTube, of course. A quick reminder, anything that I produce here will actually be available in a printable version so you can access that via the link in the description below. Now let's get started. Now module 5 is broken down into three distinct inquiry questions. Now the first inquiry question that you're going to be looking at is how are models that are used to explain projectile motion be used to analyze and make predictions? Now I'm going to simplify it by simply writing projectile motion. Obviously, if I write the full inquiry question, I'm running out of space. The second inquiry question says, why do objects move in circles? And the final inquiry question states, how does the force of gravity determine the motion of planets and satellites? And I'm gonna simplify it by just simply writing gravity. So let's break down projectile motion. Now the first key point we want to remind ourselves is that it's a model. In other words, we are simplifying projectile motion by ignoring two important factors that actually exist in most projectile motion situations. But in order to simplify, to make the mathematical analysis a little bit easier to understand, we make two assumptions. And the first assumption we make is that G is constant. In other words, what we're saying is that the acceleration due to gravity is the same strength throughout the motion of the projectile, and also the direction of the acceleration is also constant. In reality, it is not, but in our circumstances and our analyses, by making it negligible, which in many cases it is, we therefore make the mathematics a little simpler. But understand in reality, G does change both in direction and also its strength. The second aspect we assume is, is that air resistance is negligible. What we're saying here is, is that if we include air resistance into the analysis of it, it becomes much more difficult. Not only does air resistance apply a horizontal force on the object, it varies with the velocity of the object. So obviously the mathematics becomes much more complex. And so by treating projectile motion, by ignoring those two aspects here, makes the mathematics a lot simpler. And again, in reality, it's not. Check out my video, which states not a parabola, and I explore these in greater detail. Now that we've got that out of the way, we now look at defining projectile motion. And in essence, projectile motion is a situation where you have two motions. One is vertical, one is horizontal, and the horizontal motion, we assume that the acceleration is zero. In other words, it's moving at a constant velocity. In the vertical, that acceleration is a constant value in the vertical direction. Now, I've got a pointing up, but of course the acceleration is acting downwards in most situations. Now, what that means is most projectile motion situations, that acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, but it does not have to be that. For example, if I have a charge moving through an electric field at an angle, I will get projectile motion, but the acceleration now will be determined by the charge and of course the force that that charge experiences. But as a result of those two things, we get our classic parabola. And of course, that is mathematically verified by our analyses of it. So if we now go to the analyses of it, we now get our equations of motion. And our equations of motion are equations that are mathematical models. Again, tying it back to our inquiry question. And those mathematical models allows us to analyze the motion. In other words, why is it a parabola? And also make predictions. So you might get a question of a situation where you are to predict its range, let's say, given certain parameters or variables. So now we have an overview of projectile motion. Let me give you one key tip. And the key tip I wanna give you is set it out. Now I have a video that is literally saying, make sure you are rude, check it out. But in essence, what I'm trying to argue here is, is if you set out your data and your equations and understand the question, then it becomes much easier to solve projectile motion problems. Well, I hope that it helps you understand this particular inquiry question and as it fits in the other inquiry questions within this particular module. 
please remember to like, share and subscribe. Put a comment down below if this has been helpful for you. And please consider supporting me by buying me a coffee. The link is in the description below. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.